Luke chapter number 15. Luke chapter number 15. <laughs> Luke chapter. Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. Luke 15. We're continuing, continuing our series on our vision. Um, three tenets, two, two tenets of mission, one tenet of vision. We're the people that get to know God, we want to get to know God better through worship that is private and public, um, individual um, and corporate worship, devotion, um, communication and fellowship with God himself. And then secondly, we're the people that get to know one another better. Uh, God's people commune and fellowship with one another. Um, the concept we talked about, Koinonia, it's, it's uh, fellowshipping and connecting within the context of the spiritual community. We bring ourselves, our gifts, and everything that God has given us as the body. Paul calls us uh, the body of Christ. And in Ephesians chapter 4, he says, we do all that we do that the body may be strengthened it may build itself uh, that we might do the work that God has assigned us to do in the earth. And then we're the people that help the world to get to know God better through us, through evangelism and social outreach. And so uh, th that's where we are now, um, this whole idea of evangelism, which uh, we complicated over the years. Uh, but uh, the, the original assignment, the original command the commission was just to go share the good news and then teach people, teach them, teach them, the, teach them until they convert. Did you hear that, Minister Williams? Teach them until they convert. Teach them until they make a decision. We've kind of twisted it. We say make a decision, then I'll teach you as if we're some sort of secret society, fraternity, or sorority that only shares information with those who are members. And remember what Jesus said, what Jesus did. He took 12 people, 12 men who were his inner circle, and they were unregenerate. They, were, they, they weren't saved but he taught them. And then on that day when he was resurrected, I wish I had time to talk about it. I got to get into this. But on that day, the whole issue was, do you believe what I've said about myself? <laughs> do you believe when I told you that uh, I'd be turned over into the hands of, of uh, sinful men and that the scribes and the elders and the publicans and the chief priests and all those people, they would beat me, they would kill me, but on the third day I would be raised. Now do you believe that? Do you believe that I am the son of God and God loved y'all so much that he sent me? That if you just believe on me and the work that I've done at Calvary on your behalf, you shall have. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He taught them, gave them information, and then left it to their discretion as to whether or not they would believe. <laughs> That's the way it's supposed to work. Walk with them until they get it. <laughs> work with them until it becomes a reality in their lives. All right. Luke chapter 15, verse number 11. I'm not going not gonna to preach long. Thank those of you who have uh, been giving and sharing. And uh, most certainly, we, we thank you for being patient with us. As we have been having technical difficulties, and uh, I understand that it's better today, and hopefully you understand that uh, it is our heart uh, to 
since in Exodus to you, it's, it's our mantra. We owe it to people to impress them. And so please forgive us for everything that went wrong, but please understand that if today is better, it is a sign of things to come. Luke 15, beginning at verse number 11, very familiar passage of scripture. Please try to stay awake because uh, there's a tendency to know the story and because you and because you know the story <laughs> because you because you know <laughs> and because you know the story you just kind of check out and really I'm not going to share anything new but I hope it will be insightful and and helpful as we watch this as we operate in the vision of helping the world to get to know God better through us Luke 15, beginning at verse number 11, Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. <laughs> when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and he went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son but the father said to his servants quick bring the best robe and put it on him put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet bring the fattened calf and kill it let's have a feast to celebrate for this son of mine was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found so they began to celebrate but we're going to have fun with that fatted calf in the next few weeks, I promise you. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this time we have to share. Your word from which we share and your people with whom you've afforded me this opportunity to share from your word with. Pray now, God, that you would let revelation knowledge flow. Share your heart. Reveal your mind any way. You bless us. We will be satisfied. Now release a corporate anointing in this place to a greater degree. Anoint my mind that I might think your thoughts, that I might speak your words, and that I might do your work and your will. Then anoint the ears of those who hear and those who watch, that they might hear with ears of understanding, that they might receive the seed of the word in their hearts, and that they might not only understand, but they would have the will to apply what your word instructs. It's in the name of Jesus we pray now and we boldly declare the devil is defeated. God, you are exalted, and Jesus, you are Lord, and all who agree with the prayer of the man of God. Shout out hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen. And thank you, Jesus. I want you to look with me at verse number 17, and it says, when he came to his senses, he said, and you know what he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? Here I am starving to death. When he came to his senses. I want to talk from the thought, the power of awakening. The power of awakening or the power of coming to your senses. You may be seated in God's presence. Good morning, family. My brothers and my sisters, in Acts chapter number 17, one of the most famous messages preached by the Apostle Paul is recorded. In his sermon at Mars Hill, he addresses the crowd that is assembled specifically about a statue uh, that stood in the open square that had as an inscription on the base to the unknown God. He calls 
those who are at Mars Hill or at Arapagus, as it is also called, he calls those persons superstitious. And he says to them that everyone in the audience was the offspring of that unknown God. The suggestion is that his listeners did not know their father, but they belonged to him just the same. At the outset of this message, then, I'd like to suggest to you that one of the superstitions that exist in modern day Christianity is that we become God's children at the moment we accept Christ. But the truth of the matter is we have always belonged to him. The design has not changed and the blueprint remains the same. Are you listening to me? I'm gonna prove it in the word in a minute. It has been said that when we came into the world, the trauma of birth and all of our experiences in the falling world that followed after caused us to forget our heavenly beginnings and our divine nature. That condition is called lostness. Let me say it again. It has been said that the moment we came into the world, the trauma of birth, the trauma of coming into a new environment, and the trauma of all of our experiences in this falling world thereafter caused us to forget our heavenly beginning and our divine nature. You're a bit quiet, you're a bit reticent, I understand it. But remember what God said about you in the beginning of time, whenever that was. He said, he declared about you that you were, f you were made in his image and after his likeness, that you are more than a replica of who he is. You are a representation of God in the earth. That's what he said. That's what he said about not just the male Adam, but he said that about mankind. He said that you were created in his image. He said that you were created in his likeness. That's what God said about you. I wish somebody just tell yourself that's what God said about me. Yeah, we forgot that and that that uh, condition of forgetting is called lostness. Somebody ought to shout lostness. lostness. Well, my brothers and my sisters, the 15th chapter of Luke records a series of parables told by Jesus to address this issue of lostness. Watch this and estrangement. And what Jesus does in these parables is he teaches us the heart of God towards that and those which is and are lost in its experience, but not lost in God's reality. That that is the purpose of the parables of Luke 15. A parable is a story that uses natural means, natural examples uh, to convey spiritual truths. So when you read now in Luke chapter number 15, first you read about a lost sheep and a shepherd that finds the sheep that does not know that it's lost. Then you read about a lost coin. A coin that belongs to a woman that has great value to her, but watch this. She knows that the coin is lost, but the coin does not know that it is lost. It is an inanimate object. It has no ability to think. It has no ability to reason or to rationalize. It does not know that it's lost. It does not know how it got lost. But this woman who is the owner of the coin is so perturbed by the fact that the coin is lost that she sweeps the whole house until she finds it. Uh, if I had 20 minutes to talk, I would talk about the fact that there is one sheep that is lost and the shepherd moves everything that needs to be moved, shifts around what needs to be shifted around leaves what he has to leave to go find the one sheep. 
And I don't think the woman only had one coin, but she left every other coin that she had to sweep the house to find the coin that was lost. Y'all going to catch this in a minute. That is how valuable you are to the God who made you. Even though you were not aware of your state of lostness, he came and found you. Even though you were not aware of the fact that you, uh, through your experiences in life, had gotten further and further and further away from your divine design and your heavenly nature. <laughs> he thought it not robbery to come down through 42 generations and find you. Stop lying and say you were lost till you found the Lord. You didn't know where to find him. But he found you in the fullness of time. He knew where I was and had to move whatever he had to move to get to where I was. Oh, God, I wish I had time to ask you a question and pass the mic around the room. Where were you when he found you? What state, what condition were you in when he found you? Uh, what was your mindset? What was your disposition when he found you? Uh, but I don't want to get in your business today. Let me go on with the message. Somebody say, go on with the message. Well, my brothers and my sisters, the mission of the church is to reconnect people to their spiritual reality. Let me say that again. The mission of the church is to reconnect people with their spiritual reality. Even as Paul says at Arapagus, as he preaches at Mars Hill, you are talking about this unknown God, but I came to talk to you about him because not only your poets, but I, you say, he says that you are his offspring. You are his children. That's who I've come to talk to you about. I've come now to reconnect you with the source of your strength and the strength of your life. I've come to reconnect you with the source and the place of your origin. I've come to reconnect you with your maker and your designer. That's what we've come to do. And now with that in mind, let's look at the third parable in Luke chapter 15. Because this parable does not deal with a dumb, dim-witted sheep. This parable does not deal with an inanimate coin. This deals with a man who had two sons. It deals with human beings. And the text says, somebody ought to shout, the text says, you know the story. A man had two sons, and the younger of the two sons went to his father and said to his father, give to me the portion of the estate that falls to me, and I want it now. And the father then, he obliged what the boy asked him for. He gave it to him and he gave it to the other son. He, he gave it to him. And when he gave it to him, the boy left, squandered all that he had. And after he squandered it all, a famine came to the land. When the famine hit, the boy then did the unthinkable. He did the unimaginable. He did the unacceptable within the context of his culture. He, a good Jewish boy, in order to survive, hired himself out to a swine farmer. Not only did he hire himself out to the swine farmer, but the text suggests that it got so bad that the boy wanted to eat what the pigs ate. We don't preach that too much, Elder Greer. We don't preach that too much, Elder Barnes. We don't preach that too much, Elder Colbert. We don't preach that, uh, Minister Willie May, Minister Mary Tower. We don't preach it, uh, Minister, uh, Minister Tammy Williams. We don't preach it, Minister Del Vermeer. We don't preach it, y'all, that watch this. The boy wanted to eat what the pigs ate, but nobody would give him even that. If I had time to preach it, I would tell you that God has so orchestrated it that you not get comfortable in any situation that is beneath what God has purposed and planned for your life. That's why you are not accepted. That's why you are not fulfilled in interpersonal relationships. If they don't serve God's purpose for your life, you will always be starving. You will always be 
thirsty, God have mercy. And don't let your starvation and your thirst push you to want something less than what God would have to you. Okay, can I preach it a little further? So it is, so it is. The text says that the boy is there and watch this. He is so hungry and he's not getting that which the pigs ate. And so then he woke up. He awakened and the Bible said he said to himself, how many of my father's hired hand servant have food enough to eat and more? And I'm out here in this place. I'm in the pig pen and I can't even eat what the pigs eat. Oh, God, I'm suffering. I'm suffering in a place that I don't need to be suffering. He awakened. Somebody ought to shout, awakened. It is this parable then that shares with us and that expresses to us the heart of God to all humanity, watch this, who don't know how important, how special, how much they are cherished by him. It is people, people who are living life, walking through life, uh, thinking, watch this, that they are separated from God, severed from him, when the truth of the matter is they are not severed. I've been trying to tell y'all this on Tuesday nights. They are just estranged. They are a far distance away from him. But if they would just ever awaken to the fact that even though they didn't know that he was their father, he has always been aware that they are his children and that he is pursuing them as they are to bring them into relationship with himself so that they can experience the greatness and the vastness, not only of his mercy and his love, but his blessings and favor that he has purposed for them to experience. Somebody ought to shout, yes, Lord, in this place. So when you read this text, this text is really about relationship that God Father has with his children. Now, please understand, before I go further, and I'm going to get out of here, please understand that the boy, in not knowing the nature of his relationship, relationship with his father lost a lot of resources. He spent everything he had. He was in a bad place. He was in a dry season. He was in a, a season of barrenness. But watch this. The thing that motivated him was not the loss of resources. It was the fact that the relationship was not where it should be. Y'all miss what I said. I said that he was not really all upset about the resources. As a matter of fact, losing the resources taught him a lesson. He did not learn how to value what he had till he lost it. I won't preach whether y'all will be true or not. Uh, yeah, he didn't value everything until he lost everything. And God has a way of taking you through seasons of allowing you to go through experiences that will cause you to value everything because you've lost everything. And once God begins to work with you and once God begins to I help you to understand and operate in the power of his reconciliation. Once he helps you to uh, understand and operate within this whole concept of how God not only reconciles you to himself, but restores you to relationship with him through pursuing you, uh, you'll start to value every little thing that you ever had. I wish I had a witness in here. Is there anybody in here who says, Lord, if you just give it to me again. I'll value it better than I valued it the last time. And if you're really mature, you ain't even talking about cars and houses and stuff. God, if you just give me the peace of mind that I had in my best season, if you just give me the joy that I had in my best time, if you just restore to me oh God, all of the peace and all, all of the self-confidence that I had, I will value it the next time. Oh, Oh God, God, I'll eat crumbs with bones, but be happy with the joy of my salvation. Am I talking? 
talking to anybody in here who has that as your testimony wave at me and tell me go ahead and preach I wish I had a few people who were real in here I wish I had a few people in here who say yep yep I've lost some things but in the process I found that God loves me uh, God he found me I found him and now the reason I'm shouting really is not because I see a new car or a new house in my vision and in my dream I'm shouting now because I finally awakened to the fact that if I seek him first his kingdom and his righteousness if I would just draw nigh unto him he'll draw nigh unto me uh, and everything will be added unto me uh, God and next time if I got to live in an apartment it is well with my soul if I get to live in a mansion it is well with my soul if I get to push a Bentley it is well with my soul if I got to drive a Focus it is well with my soul I'm going to preach whether you want me to or not if I got a dime piece or tall dark and handsome on my arm whether you're a man or a woman it is well with my soul but if I got to walk through life all by myself I understand that you might not see nobody with me but I ain't alone for the God of all creation he's with me he'll never leave me nor forsake me lift your hands open your mouth and shout yes Lord and so this boy this boy has a moment of awakening and and what the church must do is we must understand that our purpose and our mission is to connect or reconnect people with divine purpose. Purpose, purpose that Jeremiah says was already in place before you were formed in your mother's womb. Before you were born, your steps had been ordered. Oh God, before you came into this world, you had been authenticated and ordained ordained by God to do what he has created you and called you to do before you came here God gave you this inward audacity that you might walk in the abundance and the beauty of your uniqueness I'm talking to somebody in here God have mercy I'm preaching to somebody who just had the light bulb to come on who said yep I'm gonna go evangelize and the first person I'm gonna evangelize is me I'm going to get somewhere in a mirror and tell myself, I'm God's son. I'm God's daughter. I'm created in his image and in his life. I'm going to practice on myself so that by the time I come in contact with whoever else God has for me to touch, I will have perfected my testimony and declare there is no, there is no secret what my God can do. If he did it for me, he can do Is there anybody excited about the opportunity to evangelize and to reach people with the message that to the utmost he saves. Somebody ought to shout yes Lord. Well my brothers and my sisters I, I need to jump through these three things and I, I may be through at 1030 if y'all don't push me. Turn to your neighbor and say don't push him. Don't push him. Uh, don't, 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 don't push him. Don't push him. Uh, well, he, This then is the gospel that ought to be preached. This uh, is the message that ought to be shared. This is the thesis of our faith. God did love us so much uh, that he did wrap himself in human flesh. He came in the likeness of a man, took on the form of a servant, became obedient unto the death of the cross uh, that we might be saved. God, he knew we couldn't get to him, so he came to us. We didn't know where to find him, but he knew where to find him. This is the gospel. Somebody ought to shout, yes, Lord. Well, my brothers and my sisters, first of all, uh, when there is an awakening and God is going to use you to awaken someone else to this reality, the first thing you need to know, practice this, practice this, practice it on yourself. Uh, you ought to tell them that they reserve, you reserve the right to reverse the course of your life at any time. And let me say it again. You reserve the right uh, to reverse the course of your life at any time. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to the story. The young boy goes to his father and asks.
ask his father, watch this, uh, for, the, for, the, for the goods, for the portion of the estate that falls to him now which would mean that in essence in Jewish culture he was literally cursing his father he was dishonoring his father he had broken one of the ten commandments in the Decalogue as a matter of fact it is the one that is the first commandment with promise honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the earth am I in the book he had done all of that. He had put his father to shame by uh, saying to him, Father, uh, I want it now. I'm dishonoring you. And the father put himself to shame by giving it to him. We'll preach about that later if y'all let me. His father put himself to shame by giving it to him. And the boy in his arrogance, in his obstinance, uh, this is not a situation or a circumstance where he just failed into sin. He was intentional. He knew that asking for what he asked for was an insult to his father. He knew it, and he did it anyway. The text says, somebody ought to shout, the text says, the text says that he didn't just get it and leave, but he spent all night, the night that he got it, getting it together, premeditating what he was going to do. And the next morning he left and he goes into this far country and the Bible says when he gets there, he wastes everything, watch this, that his father gave him. He didn't work for it. His father gave it to him. He had not earned it. His father out of his benevolence released it to him. Oh, God have mercy. If I had 20 minutes to preach that, I would talk about the fact uh, that folk don't value what they don't work for. Uh, God, and he did. He did all of that. And watch what happens after he had spent everything, not during the time of his spending, not while he was acting crazy, but after it was all gone, here comes a famine. And now he's dealing with the consequences of his decision. He's dealing now with the repercussions of his action after it's all gone. Now he's in a bad place. Now he's in a tight. And he hires himself out, watch this, uh, to a pig farmer. But the Bible says he wakes up, he awakens, and he comes to himself and says, I don't have to be here. Y'all going to catch this in a minute. See, what you need to understand is you reserve the right to reverse the course of your life at any time. Because God is your father. I'm going to preach whether you want me to or not. Because your destiny has been predetermined. Because your course has been set. Because God cannot lie. Neither can he repent. Because he cannot alter his plan for your life. You can wake up at any time and say even if I got myself in it, I ain't got to stay here. I'm going to preach whether you want me to or not. Somebody, some of y'all too super saved. So I hope somebody's watching who has never heard the gospel in this way. Because people, especially church folk, will make you think that if you made your bed, you got to lie in it. And maybe you do. But nobody said how long you got to lay there. I'm going to preach whether you want me to or not. Some of you have been lame. Uh, in the pig pen of your decisions for too long. Uh, some of you have been laying in bags of negativity uh, for too long. Uh, some of you have been beaten up on yourselves uh, because of wrong moves for too long. Uh, uh, God, but I heard that the God that you serve uh, is the God who says, come on, let us reason together. Uh, and if we reason, I'll separate. Uh, I'll separate your mess ups, your mistakes, uh, your mishaps and your willful wrong actions. I will separate them as far from you as the east is from the west and I'll do you one better. I'll cast 
them into the sea of forgetfulness uh, so that they will never rise to condemn you uh, in this world or in the world to come. Uh, oh, just touch some, wave at somebody and say, you reserve the right. Uh, you reserve the right uh, to change the course of your life at any time. Uh, you can get up out of wherever you are uh, and begin to live in the abundance of life uh, that he has purposed for you. Uh, don't believe the people uh, who say to you, you're getting what you deserve. Uh, the truth of the matter is God never gives you what you deserve. Uh, I'm going to preach whether you want me to or not. Uh, ain't there ain't one of us in here uh, got what we deserve uh, for all the evil that we've done. Uh, but we have learned that God does not reward us uh, according to the number of our sins. Uh, neither does he repay us uh, according to the multitude of our iniquities. Uh, but he's rich in mercy. Uh, is there anybody in here who can shout uh, because you found out he's rich in mercy? Uh, lift your hands, open your mouth uh, and shout yes Lord. Uh, shout yes Lord again. Uh, so then you reserve, wake up. Somebody shout wake up. Uh, you reserve the right uh, to reverse the course of your life at any it's up to you somebody shout it's up to me somebody shout it's up to me again but then number two I got to get up out of here it's 1028 keep me on course uh, Elder Barnes thank you son but number two some of y'all ain't gonna like this some of y'all ain't gonna like this but I got to tell it to you like the Lord give it to me number two when you uh, experience an awakening not only will you find out that you reserve the right to reverse the course of your life at any time watch this uh, but you don't get caught up in the web of closure. <laughs> All right, I'm going to make it plain in a minute. Y'all going to shout when I explain it. I said, I said, I said, once you experience an awakening to the fact that you are unconditionally and purely and eternally loved by a God who decided to love you even when you did not make the decision to love him uh, you will awaken to the fact that you don't have to get caught in the web of closure watch what this and some of y'all have heard me teach this before but I'm gonna go I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and drop it again watch this the Bible declares that when he came to his senses, he said, how many of his father's hired servants have food to spare and I'm here starving? I'm going to go and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. That might not mean anything to us, Rob. Might not mean anything to us, Denzel. Might not mean anything to us, Brian. Might not mean anything to us, Thomas, until we understand, watch this, that there is one person that is left out of this particular narrative and this conversation. Remember, he had hired himself out to a pig farmer that he might work to hit with him. But when he woke up, he talked to himself he got up and he went to the father y'all miss this let me say this again when he came to himself when he awakened he had a conversation with himself then he got up and went back home to his father what he did not do is set an appointment with the gentleman that had hired him to say I'm giving you my two weeks notice I'm going to preach whether y'all want me to or not he didn't say I'm going to work my term out work my notice because I don't want to leave you in a bad position and then I'm going to give you time to find somebody else to do for you what I've been doing and once you find somebody else then I'll leave nope he did not even connect or communicate with him he just made the decision and got up and moved can I tell you, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but the reason some of you cannot get free from the life that is beneath you is 
you uh, have allowed the enemy uh, to convince you uh, that you owe something uh, or somebody closure uh, that has not been working uh, the purpose and plan of God in your life. Uh, oh God, I'm going to preach whether y'all want me to or not. Some of y'all, watch this, uh, are trying to make too many amends uh, with something that does not serve purpose and destiny. Uh, I'm going to preach whether you want me to or not. Uh, this boy, I know the relationship was jacked up because the boy was feeding the swine food and then when he wanted to eat what the swine was eating the man wouldn't even give him the pig slop oh god i'm gonna preach whether you want me to or not those of you who have the testimony that the story of my life is that everything has been one-sided and i've made some bad decisions some bad mistakes but even in my bad mistakes i've been making more and been giving more than I've been receiving. God said now is the time for you to take the scissors and cut up the web of entrapment of closure because the only reason they want closure from you is to see what kind of way they can use what they can use to make you feel guilty about choosing your best life. I'm going to preach whether you want me to or not. They ain't gave you what you gave them. They hadn't served in your life what you served there, what you served in their life. And you need to understand that closure is sometimes just chucking the deuces and letting them know you're gone. I'm gonna preach whether you want me to or not. Oh God, you ain't gotta hang out with the same folk you used to hang out with. They don't serve your higher purpose. I'm gonna preach whether y'all want me to or not. I ain't there no more. I don't do that no more. We used to do all that together. But now I've awakened and I've understood and I know now beyond the shadow of a doubt that God has better and my better can I manifest where I am right now. Is there anybody in here who can take this mic and say, Bishop, I'll finish the message because I've made up in my mind that anything that brings me or holds me down, I can no longer afford to accommodated. I'm going to preach whether you want me to or not. Anything that is not reciprocated, that which I have given, I can no longer continue in it because God has better. God has higher. God has more. Somebody shout yes Lord. Yes, Lord. So number one, you experience an awakening. You deserve the right to reverse the course of life, your life, at any time. Somebody throw your head back and shout, anytime. Anytime. In, 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 anytime. In, in, anytime. In, in, anytime. In, 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 right, right now. Right, right, right now. It's a prophetic word going to somebody right, right now. Right, right now, right now, get up with the slop on you. Drop the slop pot. I'm gonna preach whether y'all want me to. I'm gonna say the slop jar, and maybe that's what it is. Drop the slop jar. Get up with your sloppy, with your dirty self, and walk into the newness of what God has purpose for you. Lift your hands, open your mouth, and shout, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Number three, I gotta close. I gotta close. I gotta close. I gotta close the lesson. I gotta close the lesson. Oh God. When, 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 you, when, when you experience the power of awakening, God have mercy. Uh, third thing I need you to understand, I'm, I'm gonna get out of here. I, I need y'all to stay seated on this, please. I'm really, no, please stay seated on this point if you can. Please, please do. Please do. Please be obedient. Num number three, uh, catch this. Uh, Deborah Green, watch this, daughter. Uh, watch this, Shabiz. Mothers, y'all watch this. Uh, <laughs> it's never too late. Number three, never allow the shame of your failures, flaws, and faults convince you that you don't deserve God's best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Deacon Angie, Deacon Fat, oh, y'all got to hear me, Marilyn Perry, Mama G, y'all got to hear me, Mama Willie May, Mama Killings. Mama Judy, Mama Martin, God have mercy. <laughs> Mama Greer, Mama Clark, Mama Glenn, I got to get out of here, y'all. Singers, y'all hear me now. Never, somebody ought to shout never. 
All right, Kevin Long, bring it in. Never allow the shame of your failures, your flaws, your faults uh, convince you that you don't deserve God's best. I need you to listen to the self-talk that the boy gives himself. When he awakens, he says, I will arise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I am have sinned against heaven and against you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as a hired servant. Notice now that he has made up in his mind that he will go back, but he will go back as a servant and not a son. <laughs> he has made up in his mind that as he walks back into the vast wealth and richness that his father has, that he himself does not deserve to have his father's best. And so he rehearses to himself. Oh, God. He says to himself. He goes over and over again in a soliloquous way. He's speaking to himself and he's saying to himself, oh God, I've messed up so badly. I've messed up so royally that I would just rather go and be a servant. Understand now that servants don't have the benefits that sons have. The problem is this. Once you're a son, you're always a son. You can reverse servanthood. You can be fired as a servant, but you can't be fired. Fired as a son. It's been done. I'm going to preach whether y'all want me to or not. The sperm cell and the egg cell have conjugated. You have incubated in your mother's womb for nine months. You have been birthed into the world. And in this case, you have been under the supervision and the care. The mandatory supervision and care of the father for all this time. You can't reverse all of that. So when the boy goes and approaches the home, the Bible says the father is standing on the porch. Preach Kevin Long, I think I will. He's standing on the porch. Now, I don't know why he's standing where he's standing, but I know he's standing. And the text says when he sees him, he runs and meets him. And then the boy says to him, Father, I know I've messed up. I know I've missed it. I know I've gone astray. I know I've made a mess. He said, I'm not. I've sinned against you and against heaven and I am no longer worthy to be called your son make me a hired servant come on Denzel I think I'm about ready to close it now son and watch what happens the father after he kisses him and here's what he says he does not even speak to the boy but he speaks to these unnamed servants and he says to them go now and get a robe and put it on my son but not only does he say get a robe he says get a ring and theologians will let us know that the ring that he gives the boy is his own ring and a ring is a seal that declares you belong to me and he said put on some sandals put him on his feet and the bible declares that the father says let's celebrate because this my son, he was once lost, but now he's found. He was dead, but now, now he's alive. I feel like preaching. Somebody lift your hand and shout, yes, Lord. And what the father said is you don't tell me whether or not I should restore you because you don't understand. I was just waiting for you to wake up uh, and know who you were uh, know who you were to me uh, can I go high I was the last thing I want to lay on you uh, the Bible says uh, go get the robe uh, go get the ring uh, go get the shoes uh, nowhere in the text uh, does it say the boy uh, took a bath uh, Y'all won't catch this in a minute. The father declared, you may be dirty, but I will redress you. You may be stinking, but I will honor you. You may be barefooted and bare feet symbolize a 
symbolize nakedness. You may be naked. You may be embarrassed. You may be uncovered. But you still belong to me. Can I go higher? Tell somebody. Say, neighbor, you may have messed up. You may be dirty. You may be uncovered. You may be embarrassed. But you still belong to him. I came, I came to let somebody know that he is who he said he is. And to the utmost, Jesus said, won't he restore you? Won't he restore you? Won't he lift you? Won't he raise you? Won't he change you? Won't he accept you? Won't he receive you? Shout yeah. 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 Say what you want to do. What you please. But my heart is fixed. My mind made up. I'm his. He's mine. I'm his. He's mine. Hey, 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 yeah. Let's go. It's time for an awakening. The devil is a liar. He might be speaking facts, but he ain't speaking truth. The fact is you messed up, but the truth is you belong to God. The fact is you went the wrong way, but the truth is you're here. Shout yes! Shout yes! Yeah! Let's go. It's 1043. It's 1043. Those of you who are watching who don't know Jesus, just say, Lord, save me. And he will. He'll do it in the free part of your sin. If you're not a part of any ministry, TCI, we'd love to have you. I'd love to be your pastor, your church family. I want to pray this prayer over you now, Father, in the name of Jesus. There's some who've heard this message. It resonated with them. Thank you for this moment of awakening. Thank you for this season, God, where souls are being reconnected to you through the efforts of evangelism of your people. The harvest is right. Uh, it's great, but the laborers are few. Send laborers into your vineyard. God, let people awaken to the reality of who they are in you and let them share the good news with those that they come in contact with. Now, beloved, remember you go along your way, render no one evil for evil, render everyone good for good, overcome evil with good, and render you all into the most high God. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest rule and abide with you henceforth now and forevermore. All who agree with the prayer of the man of God, shout it hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Love you much. Thank you for joining.